Aujourd'hui, 23 mars 1648, sont convenus M. Robert de Longvilliers, écuyer, sieur du dit lieu, gouverneur de l'île de Saint-Martin pour sa majesté très chrétienne, roi de France, et Martin Thomas, capitaine-major, aussi gouverneur de la dite île pour M. le prince d'Orange et état de Hollande, et M. Henri de Longvilliers, écuyer, sieur de Benevent, et Savinien de Courpont, écuyer, sieur de la Tour, lieutenant-colonel en la dite île, et M. David Copin, lieutenant d'une compagnie hollandaise, et Pietre Van Zen Hus, aussi lieutenant d'une compagnie des Susdits, qui, de part et d'autre, ont accordé et par ses présentes accordes. Today, the 23rd of March, 1648, have assembled Robert de Longvoyer, knight and lord of this place, governor of the island of Saint-Martin, on behalf of his most Christian majesty, the King of France, and Martin Thomas, likewise, governor of the said island, on behalf of the Prince of Orange and the States General of the Netherlands, and Henry de Longvoyer, Lord of Benevent, Savin, Corpon, Chevalier, Lord of La Tour, Lieutenant Colonel of this island, and David Coppens, Lieutenant of a Dutch company, and Pieter van Zeunhuis, likewise, Lieutenant of a company of the above mentioned, who on either side have agreed upon the following. Article 1 que les Français demeureront dans le quartier où ils sont à présent habitués et habiteront tout le côté qui regarde l'île d'Anguilla. Article 1. That the French shall continue that quarter where they are established at this present and that they shall inhabit the entire coast which, face it, which faces Anguilla. Article 2. Que les Hollandais auront le quartier du fort Amsterdam sur la Grande Baie et terres qui sont alentour d'ici du côté sud. That the Dutch shall have the quarter of the fort and the soil surrounding it on the south coast. Article 3. Que les Français et Hollandais habitués dans la dite île vivront comme amis et alliés par ensemble sans qu'aucun ni de part ni d'autre, se puisse molester à moins que de contrevenir au présent concordat et par conséquent punissable par les lois de la guerre. Article 3. That the French and Dutch established on the said island shall live as friends and allies and that in case of either party molesting the other, This shall constitute an infringement of this treaty and shall therefore be punishable by the laws of war. Article 4. Que, si quelqu'un, soit français, soit hollandais, se trouve en délit ou infraction des conventions, ou par refus au commandement de leur supérieur, ou quelque autre genre de faute, se retirer de l'autre nation, les dissueurs accordants s'obligent à le faire arrêter dans leur quartier et le représenter à la première demande de son gouverneur. Article 4. That if a Frenchman or a Dutchman being guilty of a criminal act or an infringement of this agreement or of a disobedience to the commands of his superiors or of whatever other remnants shall be withdrawn to the territory of the other nation, the contracting parties shall be bound to cause such a person to be arrested in their territory and to deliver them up to his governor or to the latter's first requesting it. Article 5. Que la chasse, la pêche, les salines, les rivières, étangs, eau douce, bois de teinture, minou minrou, port et rade, et autres commodités de la dite île seront communes et ce pour subvenir à la nécessité des habitants. Article 5. That the chase, 
the fisheries, the salt pans, the rivers, the lakes, the fresh waters, the dye woods, mines, mineral harbors, and roadsteads, and other commodities of this island shall be common and shall serve to provide the wants of its inhabitants. Article 6. Que soit permis aux Français, qui sont à présent habitués avec les Hollandais, de se ranger et mettre avec les Français, si bon leur semble, et emporter leurs meubles, vivre, moyens et autres ustensiles, moyennant qu'ils satisfassent à leurs dettes ou donnent suffisante caution, et pour les Hollandais en faire de même dans les mêmes conditions. Article 6. That it shall be permitted to the French person at this present residing with the Dutch to join the French if it is so pleases them and to take with them their movables, foodstuff and money and other commodities provided they shall have settled their debts or given sufficient security and that the Dutch shall be able to do likewise and on the same conditions. Article 7. Que s'il arrive des ennemis pour attaquer l'un ou l'autre quartier, les dix sueurs concordants s'obligent à s'entraider et prêter secours l'un à l'autre. Article 7. If enemies should attack one part or the other, the parties to this treaty shall be obliged to render each other aid and assistance. Article 8. Que les limites des partitions de la dite île, qui se doit faire entre les deux nations, seront remises par devant Monseigneur le Général des Français et Monsieur le Gouverneur de Saint-Eustache, et les députés qui se renvoyaient pour visiter les lieux, et après leur rapport fait, diviser leur quartier et y procéder comme dit est. Article 8 that the delimitation and partition of the said island between the two nations shall be submitted to the general of the French and the governor of St. Eustatius and to the deputies that shall be sent to visit the places and that their reports having been made shall be delimit their quarters and proceed in the manner stipulated above. Article 9 que les prétentions que l'on peut avoir de part et d'autre seront remises par devant le roi de France et messieurs de son conseil et monsieur le prince d'Orange et les états de Hollande. Cependant, ne pourront les dix concordants fortifier ni d'une part ni d'autre à moins de contrevenir aux dix concordats et de souffrir tout dépens, dommages et intérêts vers l'autre partie. Article 9, that any claims one party may have against the other shall be submitted to the King of France and the gentlemen of his council and to the Prince of Orange and the States of the Netherlands. Neither of the above parties shall be able to construct fortifications without contravening the above agreement and compensations with respect to the other party. Ce fut fait et passé les ans et jours que dessus on m'ont surnommé des accords dans la dite île et on les dit sueurs accordant signé les présentes où assistait le sieur Bernard de la Font, écuyer sieur de l'Espérance, lieutenant d'une compagnie française à Saint-Christophe. Given on the date heretofore mentioned, on the mountain surnamed this accord of this said island and signed by the said gentleman in the presence of Bernard de la Fonde, knight and lord of l'Esperance, lieutenant of a French company on Saint Christopher. Monsieur le préfet délégué auprès du représentant de l'État dans les collectivités de Saint-Barthélemy de Saint-Martin, Monsieur Vincent Berton, His Excellency the Governor of Saint Martin, Monsieur Adjamou Bailey, the Honorable First Vice Chairman of the Parliament of St. Martin, Mr. William Marlin, Honorable Members of Parliament, Mr. President of the Collectivity of St. Martin, Louis Nussington, the Honorable Prime Minister of St. Martin, 
Mrs. Sylvia Jacobs, Mesdames les vice-présidentes, Mesdames, Messieurs les conseillers territoriaux de Saint-Martin, Honorable Members of the Territorial Council of St. Martin, the Honorable Minister of Education, Culture and Youth and Sports, welcome, good morning, personnel civil et militaire de l'État et de la collectivité, personnel of the government of St. Martin, Members of the media, distinguished guests, chers invités, bonjour, good morning to one and all. On behalf of the Collectivité of St. Martin, it's a pleasure to welcome you this morning to the commemoration of the 375th anniversary of the Treaty of Concordia of 1648. Bienvenue à tous. Nous sommes réunis aujourd'hui en ce 23 mars 2023 sur le Monde des Accords pour commémorer le 375e anniversaire du Traité de Concordia. As we proceed with today's program, I now wish to invite on stage the Archdeacon Terence Rollins for the opening prayer. Je vous prie d'accueillir l'Archdeacon Rollins pour la prière d'ouverture. Let us pray. God our Father, we pause in this moment, this special and sacred moment, to acknowledge you. While we celebrate unity and friendship, we know it is all because of you. On this beautiful day, we are mindful of your presence. As we look out to your creation, cause us to be humble, to recognize that all that we are, all that we have, all that we hope to be comes from you. We thank you for 375 years of living together in peace, harmony, and unity. We thank you for our ancestors and forefathers who forged this treaty. Help us, Lord, in this generation not to do anything that would make their work go in vain, but may we considering their blood, sweat, and tears, do everything we can to carry on such a legacy. In this time, may we create even now a new chapter by forging an even closer unity. We pray for all our leaders on both sides. We pray that they will humble themselves before you, that they will recognize that you are the one true leader of all. And as they kneel before you, may they hear your word and listen well to your prayer that we all be one as you and the Father are one. Help us, Lord, in this day to make it a reality on these 37 square miles. In Jesus' name we pray. Formez vos pattes à 
Mesdames et Messieurs, je vous souhaite une merveilleuse célébration du traité. Le soleil étant au rendez-vous cette année, que la poésie s'invite. Traité de Concordia. Aujourd'hui et depuis la nuit des temps, nous ces Martinois de sang, d'adoption ou de cœur aimant, nous nous rejoignons sur ce mont afin de commémorer conjointement sous le soleil de la fraternité la noblesse de notre louable traité. Jour béni où deux grands drapeaux enlacés se sont savamment accordés en 1648 afin de le célébrer. Et cédés par notre solidarité, nos échanges, notre chaud parler, nous nous devons de préserver le sacré de cet écrit du passé. Entre cohabitation et authenticité, entre richesse et particularité, entre coopération et hospitalité, entre amitié et lien de parenté, nous renouvelons ce jour notre vœu d'unité et d'amour. So today, it is each one of us duty to preserve the caring of our sweet St. Martin home. And proudly we can say that we are, we, one family, one people, and one love forever. Thank you. Protocol having been established on behalf of myself, Ministry of Education, Culture, to Sports, let me say good morning. For me, it is a great joy and privilege to join the speakers before me and those thereafter to be present today, March 23rd, 2023, to commemorate the 375 years of the Treaty of Concordia. The Concordia Treaty, which is also referred to as a Petition Treaty of 1648, has an essential value for the people of both sides of this unique and friendly island. This agreement embodies core St. Martin values, such as unity among the people, peaceful living together, and respect for each other political, social, cultural, and economic levels of operation. This gathering here today also demonstrates the increasing initiatives among both local governments, organizations, and the people in general to enhance our collaborative initiative. In reflection on stories heard and even experienced as a young boy, I would also like to state that this early morning gathering is one of those examples of traditional practices of our ancestors to start their day early and be ready to tackle whatever is before them. I would like to express my encouragement to all of us here and those listening to this ceremony amidst all our challenges to continue to stay focused and never lose sight of the importance of living in unity, coming together and working together as one people. My sincere thanks to all government officials, the organizing committee, special invited guests, and the public from both sides of the island. I would also like to express my thanks and admiration to the artists and other talented performers participating in the program this morning, especially our children. May the good Lord continue to bless this island of ours. Have a wonderful Treaty of Concordia Day. God bless. Bonjour à tous, good morning to all. Lorsque le 23 mars 1948, la France et la Hollande 
scellaient leur destinée sur notre territoire en ratifiant le traité dit de Concordia. Ils affirmaient ainsi le partage de l'île tout en conservant chacun leur souveraineté. Ce traité qui instaure la libre circulation des biens et des personnes sur cette terre que nous partageons implique aussi une obligation d'entraide entre les deux parties de l'île. 375 ans plus tard, nous pouvons nous féliciter de cette unité, non seulement entre nos gouvernements, mais aussi entre les habitants de la partie française et ceux de la partie hollandaise. Cette coexistence pacifique, qui peut être considérée comme un modèle dans ces temps troublés, est aussi une main tendue vers une coopération plus effective et plus officielle afin que chacun s'accorde à trouver les meilleures solutions possibles pour l'avenir de notre île. Protocol having been established, good morning to all and welcome. As I continue the speech in English for Madame la VP, when on March 23, 1648, France and Holland sealed their destiny on our territory by ratifying the treaty known as Concordia, They were affirming the sharing of the island while maintaining their respective sovereignty. This treaty, which established the free movement of good and its people on this island that we share, also implies an obligation of mutual aid between the two parts of the island. 375 years ago, we can congratulate ourselves on this unity, not only between our government, but also between the people of the northern and southern part of this island. This peaceful coexistence, which can be considered as a model in these troubled times, is also a hand outstretched towards a more effective and official cooperation so that everyone agrees to find the best possible solution for the future of our island. I will continue by adding and saying, victorious is the day that true cross-border governance will exist, thus making our existence as two countries sharing one land with an open free border, meaningful, transparent, and worthy to all. Victorious will be that day, that this 23rd of March means that we are truly our brother's keeper, truly championing as one key issues of our everyday lives. May it be in the field of water, electricity, education, health, immigration, waste, or economy. It is time that we have a policy that benefits us, the people of this beautiful island. After all, we are one island, one heart with two beats. Happy 375th anniversary of the commemoration of this Treaty of Concordia. Thank you very much. I adopt the protocol that has been observed and wish each and every one this morning a blessed and pleasant, fruitful and happy good morning. 375 years ago, during a period of colonial rude, rule, during a period of enslavement, the Dutch and French governments embarked on a trajectory to coexist in friendship and peace on this tiny island. This tiny island that we call Simatin, Swaliga, Ualichi. Let us not underestimate the motivation at the time was to ensure to advance the interests of the Netherlands and France. Signing a treaty, an agreement between superpowers, determining the manner of cooperation and peace, peaceful coexistence. Since then, there have been updates, there have been discussions, there have been protocols, and more whereby the leaders of the day have made further agreements. We have stood on this hill over the past few years, Monde Accord, Concordia Hill, Marigot Hill Road, St. Peter's, whatever you want to call it, to commemorate and recognize the day of the signing of that treaty. And today we stand again on the eve of signing a new treaty, embarking on a journey towards more opportunities for collaboration in service to the people, the people, all of them, of St. Martin. 
Today, March 23rd, 2023, a beautiful day. 23023. The relationship is somewhat more complicated. There should be, in the past, in 1648, there were two signatures. The new treaty will have four, but if Mr. President would have his way, five. Today, the motivation, and I must pause here, the motivation is to advance the interests of St. Martin. Advance the interests of St. Martin and her people. Key for this commemoration is who leads the discussions. And the fact that no new agreements can be made without us, the people of St. Martin. Technical and high-level cons consultations have taken place and continue to take place. And we are far advanced to finalize the agreements as to the coordinates of the border that we can agree on, to how we will cooperate in education, tourism, economic affairs, finance, health, security, protection of our environment, responding to climate change, energy, water, sanitation. My colleague just mentioned most of these. It makes sense. It only makes sense for us to collaborate on the big issues, to tap into funds together, to achieve the sustainable development that this country deserves, not just because there are global goals, together and doing so in the best interest of our collective people. Today, I stand before you with my brother from the North. The two of us, descendants of the island whose families have rich generational ties in this very soil, and for some of us on both sides. Tasked with running our country in the favor and the voice of the people of St. Martin. Working tirelessly to ensure our bond and communication remain strong for, as the proverb goes, when brothers fight to the death, a stranger inherits their father's estate. With growing authority, with growing authorities, we seek to be the master of our own land. We seek to lead any and all discussions on cooperation. As Prime Minister, I sit at the table in discussions with Monsieur. Le Préfet, I sit with Monsieur Le Président. I sit, of course, with our governor, Mr. Bailey. And of course, I must always confer with our parliament. But any and all discussions that we have and proposals for agreements, depending well, all of them must go to my Council of Ministers. And depending on which of the two I have the discussion with, it then goes to the Kingdom Council of Ministers. This process is sometimes wrought with frustration, as stagnation can take place at any juncture of these discussions. This land is our land, our home a place for us to pass on to our future generations prominently up here this morning, some of them. Our children should inherit the bounties that are inherently theirs to that those that are Swaligan by birth or those that are Swaligan by choice. This can only be achieved through the cooperation and integration of both sides of the island. We must reject the idea that our borders create dissection or division and treat them solely as guidelines 
never as seeds of division. It is important that we have a good understanding of the differences within our systems to strategically achieve the best possible outcomes for our people who are connected by blood, by sweat, and tears. Another phrase I heard this morning. Let it be known that there is a strong collaboration already ongoing across sectors, which some need to be formally recognized between our law enforcement on land, and we look forward to more concrete progress in areas like maritime hot pursuits. We must combat transborder crime for the best interest of our people. We must ensure to include diminishing and eradicating human trafficking. We must continue to collaborate and I must say I am satisfied with the cooperative efforts that were mentioned above and that they are going fruitfully. I am concerned, however, sorry, the light. I am concerned about sometimes the lack of understanding of the realities of life on this tiny island, the ways of life, our culture, and our people which sometimes is felt, sometimes within correspondence, within press statements, and even in meetings from across the Atlantic, that is still reminiscent of the colonial period we are still trying to eradicate. Together, we are strong. Together, we can break the barriers of borders to fulfill cooperative actions that will lead to true nation building on a grander scheme. Let us not only rest in the bosom of mighty Swaliga. Let us take care of her. Let us commune in spaces like these in respect and understanding of each other, our similarities and differences, and continue to elevate the collaboration that still binds us. We are the foundation of this great island. And we must maintain that a bundle of sticks is unbreakable. Together, we are stronger. We are living in a time where dreams of our ancestors set in place for us are being realized. It is up to you. It is up to me. It is up to all of we. Let us move on from here not just with nice flowery speeches, but with actions, ensuring that decisions made are with our priorities, our needs, our way of doing things, our continued progress and development, leading at the center and always. God bless St. Martin and its lovely shores. God bless all the people of St. Martin. His Excellency Governor Ajamo Bailey, Honorable Prime Minister of St. Martin, Mr. Stelveria Jacobs, Monsieur le Préfet Saint Martin de Saint Barthélemy, Monsieur Berton, Madame la Troisième Vice Présidente en charge de la culture, chers collègues, Madame Louise, Ladies and Gentlemen, Mesdames et Messieurs, en vos grades et qualités, Bonjour. Good morning to all under the sound of my voice. Nous sommes ici rassemblés aujourd'hui pour commémorer 375 ans d'amitié et d'alliance. 375 années de partenariat, de coopération, même si elle a parfois été difficile. En dépit de toutes choses, elle a été source de bonheur, d'épanouissement et de partage. 375 ans, Oscar, Oscar 23 mars 1648, animé par un sentiment de conquête, puisqu'il prenait possession de l'île au nom de leur souverain, les personnes bien inspirées avaient formalisé les conditions du partage binational de même et modeste espace insulaire en concluant un traité dit de Concorde. 
Interestingly, not only did this Concordia Convention or agreement establish the division of the island between the two national sovereignties, France and the Netherlands, but, but above all, it laid down the principles of friendship and alliance between the two communities living on the island. Better still, it established as a common rule the pooling of the island's natural resources, equipment, and uh, amenities. This treaty gave the two communities the contractual framework for a genuine general policy of administrative, economic, and uh, social cooperation. Entre les habitants de ce territoire, au fil des 375 ans, s'est développé une unité, un sentiment d'appartenance qui, souvent, a permis que nous nous sentions soutenus, reliés contre un isolement qui aurait pu être dévastateur, tout particulièrement en période difficile, après le passage d'un cyclone dévastateur ou encore pendant la crise sanitaire. Je suis heureux de pouvoir de voir pardon, tant de monde à rassembler pour fêter cet anniversaire. Je suis encore plus heureux de savoir que ceux qui nous rejoignent sur les réseaux sociaux, car ils ne pouvaient être présents, sont encore beaucoup plus nombreux. Comment ne pas souligner une telle ferveur après plus de 375 ans de liens d'amitié renforcés et d'estime réciproque. I can't help but have a sincere thought imbued with deep recognition for those who are at the origin of the bond that unites the two sides of this island and have contributed so much to give birth to this relationship, which on every occasion happens to be a moment of sharing authenticity and conviviality. 375 years anniversary is a symbol of duration and success. I would like at this time to recognize and welcome the presence among us today of the representative of both the Kingdom and of the Government of France, elected officials of both St. Martin and St. Martin, who all jointly add to the strength of this event and our common joy. All the links initiated between the two portions of our island represents a plus for our communal and intercommunal lives. They enrich our experiences rather than our horizons make them more complete. These strengthening links have, lead, have led to friendships between inhabitants, brotherhood relationships, and motivates teachers, parents, children, presidents of associations, and their members and our citizens. These links continue to promote more tolerance, goodwill, and generosity. They make us better and will continue to do so. The future looks prosperous and while the open sometimes offers sign of weakness and dismay, we strive and remain a people full of generosity, of goodwill, and doing well. So, I embrace this 375th anniversary of oneness and celebrate. I am convinced that other highlights, other appointments will extend the link between the two sides of this island and feed the memories that have made, that made and will go on making our two realities become one. This 375th anniversary is an, is an impetus for new relationships, to build together a future ever richer in discoveries and friendship. Long live human contacts and exchanges for a common future of peace and mutual understanding. A bien regardé, la coopération entre cette partie et cette partie, est vécue comme nécessaire. Il est nécessaire parce qu'elle a fait quasiment au même moment le quotidien de tous les habitants de ce territoire. 
Elle est nécessaire parce qu'elle concerne conjointement les questions relatives à la santé, à l'éducation, à l'environnement, à l'économie, au social, à la problématique des énergies nouvelles, <rire> au transport et à la culture. Au bout de 375 ans, nous sommes convaincus que ce n'est qu'ensemble que nous, que nous réussirons le devenir de ce petit bout de terre. I no longer care to simply talk about cooperation. I want an actual doing together. I want an actual joint solving of common issues. It is time for this much needed cooperation to be formalized in real pragmatic ways. So I'm very grateful to hear Madam Prime Minister mention that, also echoed in the voice of our, um, our member of government in charge of cooperation of culture. Yes, we must now begin to ink our concerns and develop strong cooperation and meaningful cooperation between both sides. C'est bien pour cela que vous me permettrez de répéter que chaque fois qu'on me parle de coopération, je me prends à espérer qu'enfin nous franchirons le pas du vœu à la réalité. Il est temps d'y remédier, car s'il est une collectivité française qui peut, qui peut tirer le plus grand profit de la coopération internationale décentralisée, c'est bien Saint-Martin, dans la situation historique et géographique singulière où elle se trouve. May the spirit of the Treaty of Concordia live on. May the spirit of friendship and alliance continue to drive us to find new mechanisms for a better joint governance of general affairs on this island of St. Martin. Long live our unity, long live the people of St. Martin. May God bless us all. This protocol being established, please allow me to suffice by saying good morning. Good morning and congratulations to the people of St. Martin on the 375th anniversary of the Treaty of Concordia. A treaty recognizing the cooperation needed between two neighboring nations in order to peacefully coexist. Now, not only the cooperation needed to peacefully coexist, but also the cooperation needed to successfully prosper. Prosper in terms of health, wealth, and happiness in order for its people to succeed, thrive, and flourish. A people who are then and now tightly knit in common history and heritage, culture and cadence of speech and santo. Tightly knit from Dutch Hope Estate to French Hope Estate, from French Quarter to Dutch Quarter, and from Great Bay to Grand Cars. A people so tightly knit that as the saying goes, when one side sneezes, the other catches a cold. Our state of interdependence naturally guides us to work together for the common good of our nations and its people. As we celebrate this anniversary of the Treaty of Concordia, it is my hope that we continue to act upon the articles of the Treaty of Concordia the safety and security, social and economic aspects thereof. Just as important as the articles of the Treaty, or to a greater degree, in my view, is what is known as the spirit of the law. This treaty was evidently written with the goal of a peaceful, cooperative coexistence, something that should never, ever be taken for granted, here or anywhere else in the world. The now more than one year long war in Europe is a case in point. As such, we can only do the treaty and our foremothers and forefathers who lived in accordance with the treaty, justice, by also carrying out and living by the spirit of the treaty, a peaceful, cooperative coexistence. Not just in times of prosperity, but especially in times of trials and tribulations. So, 
when we as leaders of these two great and greatly interdependent nations travel back down this hill as the signatories to the treaty did 375 years ago, may we do so with the spirit of the Treaty of Concordia etched in our minds and in our hearts and at the forefront of all that we do, not only at commemoration of anniversaries, but every day in honor and reverence of those who blaze the trail before us and with the foresight and vision for those to come after us. Thank you. God bless you and God bless our great village, Simon. As you say in Saint Martin, the protocol has been established. So I just say uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, it's just a special uh, great to uh, this is uh, Sonia Fleming. Oh, it's a wonderful uh, poem. And uh, also my thanks to uh, the artists, the children, enlightening uh, our morning this ceremony. So as everybody say, 375 years ago, here on Concordia, France and the Netherlands sealed their common destiny in Saint Martin, or Saint Martin. It was an ambitious and daring bet to recognize friendship, peace on each part, and common share of the resources. On the center way of war between nations, and especially between the French and the Dutch, between Catholics and Protestants, this agreement was really visionary and brilliant. And this genius, this genius is the identity of Saint Martin over the centuries. As a French visitor, Gérald Kemps, said in 1954, you all know his words, let us all cherish this pride to be such a unique place. And no matter who runs the fastest, the essential is that we all celebrate together and for the good of all on the right side of history. Today, I'm sure that we are on the right side of history. Today, Netherlands and France more than ever are friends sharing the same destiny, the same vision in Europe, threatened by the war in Ukraine, weakened by its divisions, and facing the climate change. This partnership between these two nations is vital. And here, in St. Martin, is a necessity for us. Once again, I want to express my gratitude to the Prime Minister, to the Governor, Monsieur le Président de la Collectivité, for vos efforts en faveur de la coopération transfrontalière. Nous avons tant à faire ensemble. La sécurité, bien sûr, comme Madame Jacobs l'a dit. Je veux saluer la coopération remarquable entre la gendarmerie, la KPSM, entre les services de douane, entre les services d'immigration. Nous avons tant à faire pour lutter contre le trafic de drogue, contre le trafic des êtres humains, contre la criminalité qui altère notre qualité de vie ici. Nous avons tant à faire en matière d'éducation, de partage entre les jeunes, de partage entre les écoles, entre les lycées. Nous avons tant à faire en matière de santé pour que nos structures hospitalières travaillent ensemble et que nous partagions ensemble les compétences et les expertises de chacun. Nous avons tant à faire en matière d'eau, de production d'eau, en matière d'électricité, en matière de gestion des déchets, en matière de prévention des risques, en matière d'environnement. Alors oui, Monsieur le Président, j'invite très fortement la collectivité le gouvernement de Saint Martin de saisir les possibilités de coopération que nous donne la loi. Et l'État que j'en présente les y encourage très fortement et les accompagnera très fortement, notamment à travers les fonds européens Interreg. Donc je souhaite que la gouvernance soit le mieux possible exercée ici, à Saint Martin, ici entre nous et dans un partenariat étroit et réciproque avec Saint Martin. Mesdames, Messieurs, There is no future for this island apart from the unity of its population. Et la frontière que nous avons évoquée, cette frontière où nous sommes, ce n'est pas un mur, c'est une main tendue entre nous pour faire face et pour avancer dans l'histoire et dans le futur. Que l'esprit de Concordia souffle sur vos têtes, sur vos esprits, pour longtemps, Langue via Saint-Martin. Merci.
heart of the unity flag. 37, 12 miles, 33 years in the making. One island, Swaliga. One people, Walichi, with one destiny, St. Martin. August 31st, 1990, it marks the birth, the birth of St. Martin's unity flag. An epitome of cultural unity, a vision long conceived into prominence by son of the soil, the son Saku. Alongside visioneers, Fabian Badicho, Shuja Ref, Rhoda Arundel, and Daniela Jeffrey, who embarked upon a journey to unify this nation and her people in the way our ancestors foretold it, with a symbolic representation that encompasses our pride, history, heritage, and tradition as one people. The flag, the flag represented in the colors blue, light blue, green, red, and yellow, depicts our island's treasured seas, sky, and nature's energy, blood, and courage captivatingly adorned with unity stars, the brown pelican, the frontier monument, the sandbox tree, the tamarind tree, and fruit trees in all their leaves. Alu plant and reminisce of the rock walls piled like a salt heap and the sword of St. Martin Tours. All, all illustrating our encapsulated history, the art of the unity flag. On September 16, 2020, a veil was lifted when our freedoms were tested and our boundaries were trampled. A timeless precursor reared its ugly head that again was clawing, that again was tearing at the very fabric of our way of living, our way of coexisting, diminishing our values and decrees. Like the Treaty of Concordia, they strip we ebbing away at our togetherness. So as the emotions ran high, temperatures charged and leaped by mountains, the call for unification was echoed and answered. The shift in the tides were on our banks. The shift in the tides were on our banks. As we the people rallied, as we the people rallied for a cause, the difference in the air, could be felt the vibrations as it stirred the atmosphere with the preeminent anticipation for what we were about to embark upon was beyond momentous. For as far as the eyes could see, the phenomenon was beyond a dream. As hundreds of Swaligian brothers and sisters washed the pavement, stretched from frontier to Bellevue, draped a Lenoir, waving proudly the civilization of unity. The vibration of energy rippled through the air, sending round this resounding songs, resounding songs of a united front, a moment of paramount the yard of the unity flag. As the tears spilled and the voices roared, sowing overheads while the Martin unity flags sailed the air in all its glory, breaking down walls of division, the message was clear. What binds us as a people was manifesting here today. As we come together, we overcame together. We stood tall and proud and prideful, coming to the realization that we shine better together. Victory was ours. Victory was ours. Victory was ours. The yacht of the unity flag. August 23rd marks the destiny of two national communities as the nation prominent heads met, assembled, and reflectively pronounced a joint agreement establishing the unity flag as a reflection identifying our people 
the voice of our people, embodying our physical, emotional, and spiritual family ties. The art of the unity flag. St. Martin's unity flag in all her splendor is an affirmation of our island's unity, cemented forevermore. So let us rise. Let us rise and stand bold with pride in arms, in arms. For we, St. Martin Unity Flag, I salute thee as it flies high. I am Melissa Fleming, and I thank you. Let us be one. 